Well, Stuart Nash. Mr Speaker, I move that the motion be amended by inserting the words this day six months after the word time. Mr Speaker, this bill is called the Taxation GST and Remedial Matters Bill. This implies that the bill is a taxation bill primarily concerned about GST and remedial matters. It makes sense. It is the title of the bill, it's what it's about, it's what was sent to the Select Committee, and it's what we talked about in the Select Committee, it's what we heard submissions on in the Select Committee, it's what the last, spoker, uh, sorry, the last speaker heard and, <laughs> and deliberated on at the Finance and Expenditure Select Committee. Now, the last speaker and members of that side of the House, Mr Speaker, spoke on this bill in the first and the second reading. They gave full speeches and they spoke in support of this bill, Mr Speaker. However, in the time between the, first read, uh, between the second reading and the committee stage, deliberation committee stage, there was an SOP introduced which was 70 pages. The bill is 57 pages. There was an SOP introduced which was larger than the bill itself. In fact, Mr Speaker, this SOP is larger than seven of the nine tax bills that have come before this House this term. Seven of nine tax bills. This OP is larger than that. However, what's even more amazing is there has not been one member on that side of the House, no one from the Finance and Expenses Select Committee, no, one, no former member of the Finance and Expenses Select Committee, who has actually taken a call on the committee stage of this bill. We have talked, we have been here for nearly 12 hours, for nearly 12 hours talking on the committee stage, committee stage of this bill, and not one member, and not one member of the government has spoken about that, except now Mr Gilmore. Mr Gilmore has something to say. Well, let's hope Mr Gilmore has something to say for longer than two minutes on this, because this, this bill deserves that. This SOP deserves more than two minutes standing up and saying, I support this, and then sitting down again. And Mr Gilmore, you know better than that. You know better than that. You have all these financial qualifications. You know about the tax system, and you know that 130,000 legal entities are being rubbed out because of this SOP. But Mr Speaker, I would just like to make two points in my third reading speech. The first one is Labor might well have supported this bill if the Minister had undertaken proper process. The second point is that this is no way to pass tax legislation. Mr Speaker, the GST component in this bill related to zero rating land purchases between GST registered companies. Or parties, I should say. So it was quite a change. It was quite a change because we're talking about zero rating, and therefore it probably deserved the headline. That's why the bill is called the Taxation GST in Remedial Matters Bill. The zero rating provisions removed the possibility of rogue taxpayers undertaking Phoenix fraud. We supported these amendments. We supported this bill in its first reading and its second reading, and during the committee stage, everyone in this House supported this. Part two of the bill concerned amendments to the uh, Income Tax Act, and we supported this part of the bill in the first and second reading and at committee stage. Part three amended the Tax Administration Act 1994, and we supported this as well. Part four amendments to the Income Tax Act, and yes, we supported these. Part five amendments to the Kiwi Saver Act. Part six Stamp and Check Duties Act, and part seven amendments to other legislation. And yes, we also supported these. You get the picture? This was a pretty simple bill. It was a technical bill, as I said in my first reading and second reading, and as my colleague <coughs> David Cunliffe mentioned in his second reading, it was a technical bill. One of those necessary bills that Labor actually supports, because we support good, common sense, robust, transparent legislation. That's what we're about. We support legislation that allows taxpayers or allows taxpayers the ease of paying tax, that simplifies tax legislation, that adds a level of transparency. This is what we support, Mr Speaker.
We support it in first and second reading and through the select committee process. And this is what we did. And we did it in good faith. And then what happened? On Wednesday evening, when we were sitting in this House, we saw a 70-page supplementary order paper lumped on the table. 70-page supplementary order paper to this bill, the GST and Remedia Matters Bill, put on the table. Now I ask, what has this minister been doing? The minister told us that these changes had been signalled. And we know that. We knew the changes had been signalled. It was the tax working group that signalled these changes, as the minister pointed out. A discussion document outlined these changes, as the minister pointed out, and the budget outlined these changes. And actually, within the Labour tax team, we believed there should have been changes to the LAQC rules. We weren't against working with the government on changes to this tax regime. But, Mr Speaker, what the Labour Party demands is transparency and consultancy and accountability in tax legislation. And this is not what this bill has now become. And this is why we cannot support this bill. We cannot support this bill. Mr Speaker, this original bill, and I was going to say the substantive part of this bill, but it's only 57 pages compared to 70, was introduced on the 17th of August. Now, as I have pointed out, there has been plenty of time for the Minister to undertake consultation with his officials, with the experts, behind closed doors, because it didn't happen in the Select Committee process, but with the experts and the drafters to come up with a bill that he could have presented to the House and to Select Committee, and we would be debating now. Mr Speaker, the thing about this bill is if it had stayed in its current form, the 57 pages, if it had stayed in its current form, then instead of starting at 9 and finishing at 9, we probably would have started at 9 and maybe finished at 11 a.m. It would have been two hours, not 12 hours. And the reason it's taken 12 hours is because the Labour Party rejects outright, rejects outright any tax bill that has not gone through the proper process. And the proper process is this. The Minister followed it. The Minister followed it to the drafting stage. He drafted a bill, well, he's OK, but that could have been a bill because it was larger, like I said, than seven out of the nine tax bills that we have seen before this House. Then the rest of the process is it goes to select committee. And then what happens at select committee is Labour members, Green members, ACT members, Maori Party members and national members get an opportunity to look at the bill, to talk to their expert, to talk to officials and to call for submissions from those who hadn't been originally consulted. So the minister went halfway and then stopped. And he said that was enough. He said that was enough consultation. Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I contend that is enough. That is not enough. The Labour team contends that is not enough. Because when it comes to taxation, it is only fair that the people of New Zealand have their say. Because what the Select Committee will do is it will put ads in every major newspaper and it will ask New Zealanders, no, it won't ask them, it will tell them their rights under the process, under due process. And what it will say is, as New Zealand citizens, you have the right to appear before a parliamentary select committee and give us the views that you hold on this piece of legislation. And what then happens is members of that select committee from all sides, every single party in this House, will take on board their, uh, their recommendations and their submissions. We talk to officials, we talk to our expert tax consultant, and then we come up with considered opinions. That is the process. And I contend, Mr Speaker, that if that process had been followed, then this bill would have passed. The supplementary order paper, which would have been another bill, probably would have passed. But it would have passed with amendments, because there always are. In every single remedial matters bill, then there are changes. Because we always make changes, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr Speaker, and they always make sure the bill is a lot more robust. The tax officials do a brilliant job. They hear what we're saying. 
They liaise with our consultant and our expert and say, yeah, we hear what you're saying, this is good.